Welcome back to Think Tech. This is movies you can learn from. And uh, George and I really found one that will knock your socks off. Um, we did a review of a movie called Jaguar a few weeks ago. And it was about uh, a group that had escaped Mauthausen uh, death camp in Austria um, and had come into Spain uh, to hunt Nazis who had run away to Spain. And one of the characters was uh, a fellow named Otto Bachmann, who had the proverbial uh, German scar from dueling on his cheek, very recognizable individual. Um, but he was a docudrama character. Uh, he wasn't, you know, that wasn't the name of a real character. But, um, you know, George is a research person, and he pursued that and found that there was a guy named Otto Scorzani, and a very uh, uh, authoritative movie was made, documentary movie, was made about his life, right down to the scar. Um, and so today, we're going to review the movie about the real Otto and uh, tell you about the incredible things that he did uh, during the war and after the war in Europe. He was a character, uh, amazing character, not to be not to be loved, liked, or trusted. Uh, George, um, how did you find that movie? Uh, it, it was really a work of art to find it and then watch it and send it to me, and I really enjoyed it on, on a, a kind of intellectual level because I wanted to know more about what happened in Spain. I had been unaware of what was going on in Spain, come to find um, that Jaguar is, in fact, based on some real people, some real events in Spain. It's not just fiction. Basically, what happened is when I was watching Jaguar on Netflix, this documentary popped up a number of times. And then after you brilliantly mentioned that score about Scorzeni, right? That uh, that and that the Jaguar series with Doctor Death was not accurate. I'm always concerned, as we've talked about in the past in other reviews, about historical accuracy. And I figured, wait a minute, something's fishy here. So I'm going to go and look under the surface to find out what's really going on. And, and that's when I learned this. But basically, it was Netflix that alerted me to this, right? And then I start doing research on news and whatever to get a few, a little more information on this. So it was Netflix that ran, ran me to that. And then I watched it. And, and, um, and then the other thing I sent you was this English blogger really filled in all the, the little particulars about Scorzani. The guy was really, really bad news gun for hire. He had no morals. It was everything about himself to advance himself. Like we well know right now with our former presidents, oh, me, 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 me. There's no moral scruples at all. He just was out for himself. And he even killed Nazis, you know, when it was to his benefit, right? So really bad guy. I mean, and yet he lived a life of luxury in Spain. Beautiful. He had a a summer place on, an, I think, Mallorca or, you know, one of those Spanish islands. He was living a good life. Son of a bitch. Oh, excuse me, I shouldn't swear, you know, on the show, a family show. But, I mean, you can we can fill in a lot of the gaps. He was involved with so, so many. He was involved with Soviet uh, KGB. Um, he was involved with our CIC in America. He was involved with uh, um, the Mossad, as we mentioned. Uh, he was involved with so many others. Uh, Fidel, he was trying to, you know, Fidel get killing Fidel Castro. So he was a, he was a gun for hire and very bad guy. Only me, me, me. So you can fill in some more, Jay. Maybe I'm forgetting things. No, uh, he, he was Austrian. Yeah. Um, he was a uh, Nazi through and through all his life. Even when he was working for the Mossad, he 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 told them he was a Nazi. It's interesting. Um, and he managed to, you know, work for and um, develop contacts through a number of interesting um, uh, intelligence organizations around Europe and the U.S. But let me go back. Let me go back in time. So when the war broke out, he, he joined uh, the Nazi party and then he tried to get a job um, 
uh, I think he wanted to be a pilot, but they said he was too tall because this guy was 6'4". If you like tall people, you like this guy. And um, they put him in the SS instead, and he did some dastardly things. That he was responsible for the deportation of uh, something over 300,000 Jews um, to, to death camps. Um, and uh, later on, he worked for the Mossad. Go figure. Yeah. Anyway, um, he, did, he was Hitler's soldier. He was Hitler's special, uh, special project person. And he would do the most remarkable things, like, like rescuing Mussolini. He did that and, yeah. and endeared himself to Hitler and lots of other strange missions where he demonstrated his uh, ability. Of course, there were also a lot of missions where he failed. Mm-hmm. But he kept he kept going, and it was a study in how you could be the way Hitler wanted you to be, um, how you could be the mm-hmm. the autocrat's perfect soldier. And he got very close. He got close to the whole retinue around Hitler. Um, and I, you know, it's just just fantastic the kinds of friends he made, the kinds of influence that he had within the top echelons of the Nazi Party and of the army. The, you know, the Nazi army. Uh, he was responsible for a lot of military strategy uh, during the war in the Ardennes, for example. Uh, he knew how to pull it off. He knew how to, um, he, had, he had this really interesting operation where he had his troops dressed in American military uniforms uh, as spies. You know, that's, that's um, espionage or worse. And the Americans caught, caught them. And shot them on the on, on the spot, because in a war, that's what you did with somebody who dressed up in your uniform. Um, anyway, the guy was the guy was really smart and ruthless during the war and with with Hitler, and he managed to ingratiate himself and n- never you know never got never got hurt. And and he was at the uh, the trials in Nuremberg. He was a defendant. Um, Scorsese. He was a defendant at Nuremberg, and he was acquitted because the people from the American uh, Army and I guess the intelligence organizations that he worked with then um, testified for him and said he was a good guy. He was not a good guy, but somehow he he was corrupt enough, and he found enough corrupt people around, including the American Army, um, to be acquitted. Okay, and after that, uh, he ran, as with the other Nazis, and he went to Spain, where he didn't even hide. He did not hide. And Jaguar, the movie Jaguar, you know, tells you about these guys were publicly visible as Nazis in Spain after the war. And uh, Scorsese was, uh, became a businessman. Um, he, he dealt in arms, hmm? yeah, illegal arms. Um, he had some really dark deals that he made, made a lot of money, bought property, bought, bought uh, real property all over Europe, had a number of homes, including the one you mentioned in Mallorca, and he had uh, properties in Egypt. He had properties all over the place. He was very wealthy uh, guy at the time. Um, and uh, he was friendly with uh, the, the top Nazi escapees, you know, like Eichmann uh, and uh, Mengele, um, all those guys. And somehow he managed to escape. He was smarter, more wily than the ones who got caught. And a very interesting life, working for all these intelligence and uh, spy organizations for various countries. I wonder if they all knew how invested he was in spy organizations in countries that were adverse to them. I wonder if the CIA knew that he was working for all these other organizations, like the KGB. He's working for the KGB and the CIA at the same time. Go go figure. Working for the Mossad um, and I don't know how many others. Uh, The guy had a really interesting life. And at the end of the day, he died in 1975 from smoking cigarettes lung cancer, and he died. And they had two funerals for him, one in Spain, 
and uh, one in I guess I guess it was Berlin. And in both of those funerals, they all came from miles around, and they gave the Nazi salute. In 1975, they're giving the Nazi salute. Except the most extraordinary group of people, and just like Jaguar, you say how it. How could this be? How could they remain under wraps this way? How could they continue to operate this way? And this was the this was uh, the smartest guy in the room. He did. You know, Jay. One of the things growing up in the fifties, I had teachers in high school. Yeah, you know, one of my teachers had gone to Brandeis, and then the other guy Spiro. I mean, we never learned about really the nitty-gritty about the Holocaust. And then on TV, they had Hogan's heroes. It made the Nazis look like you could laugh because they were so silly, right? You know, remember the Commandant Clink, right? I mean, every time you, I, I think of my childhood Nazis, I, I laugh because it reminds me of that show. But the reality is, right, is that these were horrible people. Scorzeni was a, was a very horrible man, right? And, and, and yet, our government protected him, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is our government protected him because they thought he was of some value. Right. And they thought it was of some value because of his connections with former Nazis. Well, current Nazis, because these guys remain Nazis all their lives, uh, including into the modern time. But, you know, what, what struck me about this, um, and I don't know if it, it struck you about it, this is a documentary, and it was documented. As documented, there were there were documents in this documentary, and there were historians, um, mostly Spanish historians, but also American historians and historians from around Europe, who were telling us about him, about Scorzani. And what what struck me is that you know we have not been looking at the war in a nuanced, you know, sophisticated way. People played all sides of the fence. They did the most remarkable things. You know, we've, we've heard, you know, the, how people were killed in the, in the death camps. And we've heard the, um, you know, the Americans, uh, you know, who won the war and the British. It's all, it's um, interesting in the sense that it's, it's, it's also um, formulaic. But you don't hear about the guy who played both sides or all sides. You don't hear about the remarkable missions and strategies that they were thinking of. You don't hear about the deceptions, the lies, the murders. Uh, it was much more complex than we were raised to think. And that's what the interesting part of this movie is. It shows you that that the war and Europe and you know the espionage business is so complex and so dangerous. And yet, there are people who live that life for their whole lives right, right. and were able to, you know, successfully navigate um, all these lethal risks. And Scorzani was one of them. You hate him. Uh, I hate him yeah. um, because I because I think he, you know, he he couldn't be trusted by anybody. You can't trust. Um, but nobody ever caught up with him, and you have to give him credit for that. And he died, you know, in his bed. Um, but I find, I find, you know, and you can compare that with what happened just yesterday with, um, Evgeny, um, Prigozhin, who was in a small plane with 10 people flying to Moscow and all of a sudden it dropped out of the air and crashed. And we don't have confirmation, but it appears that he was on that plane. And then you think, Hey, wait a minute. This isn't this what Putin does? And this is what happens. In you know, in the spy business, dealing with autocrats and dictators, your life isn't worth a dime. And I guess we should have realized that Pagosian's life wasn't worth a dime. Um, and through this whole mm, period of history, you would have thought that Otto Scorzani, his life wasn't worth a dime because he was on the wrong team, but he was able to satisfy everyone. He was able to navigate between the most dangerous people in the world. And that's why they called him the most dangerous man in Europe, because he had the power to assassinate. He was an assassin. Uh, this is more interesting than, than 
than, than fiction. One of the things that it brings to mind is that in 1961, Dulles, who was the head of the CIA, he, he wanted to, um, Scorzini was going to do, uh, uh, assassinate Fidel, you know, Castro, right? And Kennedy put the Knicks on. I, I think that in our own country, they were enemies of JFK in our own country. That, and then finally he ends up being assassinated, and we don't know the particulars of that. And the doctor death, uh, Albert uh, Arabert, Heim, Heim. he didn't go to Spain or South America. He ended up in Egypt. He took on a, 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 an Arabic name. He uh, changed his religion ostensibly to act to Muslim, right? And he, he died there. He also lived a full life, right? His son later said that in 1992, he had died in Egypt. And of course, he went there to play against Israel, you know? I mean, why go to Egypt of all places? So these, these guys were game players. And they talk about in this uh, thing about the Hakka, which was a whole 35 secret organization to get all these Nazi leaders in case of the Nazi defeat to freedom. This stinks, you know? This, I mean, Putin. Also, look at Erdogan. He's playing Russia. He's playing America. He's playing all sides, right? And, it, and, 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 and we got the same thing going on now. And, you know, I mean, you know, even our own government, State Department, playing footsie with Iran, you know, with those crazies we right, you see in Iran. So this is, you know, what about morality in the world? Why, why don't we, why don't all these governments deal with morality? That fact that Scorsese could get away with this really brings question in, into our, all of our minds is what really goes on in, in this, in the, in the spy organizations? You know, how can we allow this creep to get away? You know, I mean, I don't know with the Werner Von Braun how much he was involved with the actual. No, but there was another scientist. Yeah. There was another scientist, and Skazani was uh, arguably responsible for his, for his Krug. death. Krug in Egypt, yeah, because yeah, he he actually. So I said he killed. He was friendly Ma with Werner von, von Braun. Yeah. After he, the war. Right. He, he I think he was helping the Egyptians build missiles. Yes. Yes. And yes. Skorzeny's, um uh, mission was to do away with him, and he did. He did. He was an assassin. He was organized. I mean, what a movie it would make. We don't really know. We only know from this documentary some of the really sordid things that he was involved in. There was some suggestion that there was an organization, arguably, that was involved in the assassination of uh, of Kennedy, President yes. Kennedy. That's what I was alluding to, that, yeah. that there was definitely involvement there, too, you know? I mean, we don't, to this day, we don't know really about the assassination completely. We covered a lot of cover ups. Yeah. And, you know, at first you think, well, hey, this is conspiracy stuff. But no, it's not conspiracy stuff. This is what this guy did and his friends did. And they, they, they could not be trusted for a moment. Um, and they were playing, you know, every country against every country. And you say to yourself, um, Hollywood couldn't make a movie like this. Um, Hollywood could never think this stuff up. But these yeah. guys, you know, I mean, why did the Americans play with him? Why did they testify in his favor? He had killed a lot of people. He was a war criminal, yes. but they let him off because he was useful to them. And the American, the American intelligence agencies, I'm just guessing here, but they were desperate to have somebody who would play both sides. They were desperate to have somebody who would give them access to where the Nazis were, and that would be leverage. <laughs> and he played with this KGB. He was, he was, he was literally not only playing ball with the American CIC, he was playing ball with the KGB. So I mean, the man had no scruples whatsoever. Totally, totally lacking any moral compass at all. I mean, I think I think of Mr. T right now. You know, uh, mo no moral compass. You know our former president, you know, it's all about self-interest, whatever self-interest. Well, and secrets. Secrets. And, and secrets, you know, really, really dark, evil secrets. What does that say about our, our own government, our own, uh, you know, J. Edgar Hoover? I mean, I've done a lot of reading about him. 
He's a real character, too, if you know his personal life. Good Lord. You know, people in power that are only looking out for advancement, you know, and really don't. I mean, how many, the, the whole of Holocaust, how many millions of people, not only Jews and Span, Spanish and, and other people, were murdered by the millions and millions of people. And then we go and we play ball with the people like Scorzeni. What does that say about, you know, a, a more moral thing? I guess there's no morality. It's just, well, they say. But the other thing is that you and I went to school. We read books. We were exposed to the popular entertainment culture. Right. We saw, as we grew up, a million movies characterizing World War II. Um, but we had no idea about the machinations that were going on. I mean, it, sometimes the, the movies would have a, a sexy plot twist and say, oh, that's just Hollywood making it up. But no, um, there, there are remarkable things happening. And I come away from this, from your discovery of this documentary, thinking that, you know, I have not been exposed to this sort of thing before. My first reaction was, no, this this couldn't have happened. There couldn't be a person like this. There couldn't be a life like this. And all his friends, it's like one bad movie after another. And yet it was true. Um, and so that's, that's a real revelation. Uh, our educations have been incomplete about our own government, about what happened in Europe, about countries we thought were, you know, on the up and up and maybe not. Um, it's real complicated. And and if if you think that it ended in 1975 with Strozani's death, think again. Oh. You know, that's the way things work. And they have not stopped working that way. And, you know, as you said, look at Putin. Look at all these characters who have these really dark uh, secrets and who have been responsible for uh, a, a, a huge number of of murders and assassinations, and we don't hear about it. Um, I think it's uh, it's it's really a revelation. So um, I guess what I'm what I'm suggesting is I think everybody ought to see this movie. They can make of it what they want. They can decide that it you know it's just a bunch of historians making things up. Um, but more likely, um, they're going to get the idea that that that. The, the fact is much scarier than the fiction. Um, and if you really want to have a good look at World War II and the aftermath in Europe and the people who ran away, you know, who, who uh, sort of left the ship, so to speak, um, the rats that went in every direction from South America to North Africa to Middle East, everywhere. Um, this is the story of those guys, and they did it with accomplices. They did it with collaborators who may have been associated, who were associated with the United States. Mm. Yeah, even Perone. I mean, Scorzini was even playing ball with uh, Perone, and they said he had an affair with his wife, Eva Perone. You know, it's just, there's just a lot of, um, a lot more to this. So I would definitely say it's for, for the watch. Yeah. Team. Sure. I'm I'm disappointed in the sense that I I don't think there are a lot of movies out like this. Uh, well, I, it could be there are very few people out out who were anything like uh, Otto Scorzani. Um, you know that he he's just one of a kind. But more likely, I think there were others who managed to stay under the radar. And nobody made movies about them. And suffice to say that if you want to feel educated, this is the kind of thing you look for. And this is the kind of thing you sort of build into your worldview and your historical view. And so this is this is not a movie for entertainment at all. This is a movie for real education. Change change your way of looking at things. And therefore I give it a ten plus. I think it's important. And and kudos to you for noticing it and finding it and suggesting it for our review. I give it a ten plus two. It's just it just clarifies things and and brings things to light and movies you can learn from. This is definitely not for entertainment, but to as you said, 
to learn from. So one 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 uh, last thought though, George, you know, so we have this reaction to the movie and we say that truth is stranger than fiction. I don't think we're alone. I mean, other people watch this movie. They made this movie recently. This was made uh, not too many years ago. My Spanish, my Spanish filmmakers, by the way, to their credit, a lot of good films coming out of Spain. But um, I think there are other filmmakers who are of the same mind and who are studying this kind of, you know, under the surface historical flow that we've been talking about. And they will make movies. And one of the things that I think will come out of that, out of, out of this movie about uh, Otto Scorzani um, and the investigation by um, historical investigators into his life, um, one of the things that come out, will come out of it is filmmakers who want to find out more and want to do documentaries or docudramas about similar circumstances that the public had no idea about. And one of those things is going to be what Donald Trump has been doing and his enablers. I mean, more than evidence in court, more than what they can find with, you know, all these various witnesses they've been talking to, but the real deal, all of it. And uh, I think that's equally remarkable. And it won't happen right away. You know, the, the historical aspects of this will filter out over a period of years, and then we will see, and it will be a, an important time, we will see movies that explore what that guy has been doing and his friends, what they've been doing. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But if he gets reelected, we're going to have an autocracy here. We've got the, he's got the Supreme Court on his side. I'm really worried, you know, if he wins, he's got the Supreme Court to decide in his favor. And then we're going to have an autocracy and then a lot of things are going to be covered up. So this is a very critical election we're coming up to. Yeah. You know, it's a not that I'm happy with Joe Biden's foreign policies. You know, we can get into that. But this is a critical election. Well, all I can suggest to you is in the next year, when you lay your head down on the pillow, Make a little prayer for Fannie Willis and Jack Smith. Yeah. Um, make a prayer. Thank you very much, George. Thank you, Jay. Um, for a very interesting movie and discussion. Aloha. Thank you, Jay, as well.